The Night Beat starts right now. We begin with a live look at radar, picking up some activity tonight. Not as much as last night for sure, but much of this is in northwest of San Antonio, but nothing severe right now. We will check in with meteorologist Adam Kasky in a moment, but first. Breaking tonight, a four-year-old boy killed in an accidental shooting. Police say it happened during a barbecue on this Memorial Day. That tragic shooting happened this evening on the southeast side in the 1400 block of Avent Avenue. That's not too far from Rigsby and Clark Avenue. The night team's Jaffney Gray was there speaking with neighbors and police on the scene. We're not sure at this point uh, who was holding the gun when it went off, but the four-year-old was shot in the stomach. Tragic. No words, you know, you could say to make anyone feel better. People living in this east side neighborhood along Avant were shocked after learning what happened at this home earlier this evening. I saw lights flashing through the window and came outside and I just saw the street blocked off with police cars and just wondering, oh my God, what's going on? You know, San Antonio police say while people inside and in the backyard of the home were enjoying a barbecue, a 10 year old and four year old boy were alone playing inside a bedroom. Chief William McManus says that is when the two boys got their hands on a weapon. Someone heard a pop. They ran in and found a little boy. Police say the family immediately called for an ambulance, but tried rushing the boy to the hospital themselves. Along the way, they were able to flag down the ambulance and route, which transported the boy to Bamsey. Sadly, the boy was later pronounced dead at the hospital. This is, you know, something we weren't, we wouldn't expect to see. At this time, McManus says the shooting has been deemed an accident. I don't know where the gun was stored. I don't know where the little boys found it. It may well have been secured, but apparently not well enough. He is unsure if any charges will be filed. Our prayers are with him, but you know, just you have little ones in the house. You got to be more cautious, more aware and just be careful, you know, because I mean, young children, you know, they're very susceptible to, you know, grabbing a weapon and possibly injuring themselves or others. And, and just like the situation, you know, Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying the woman who was found stabbed after jumping from a moving car in what investigators are now calling a domestic violence case. That woman just identified as Miranda Malowski, who was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Investigators say that vehicle was wrecked at the intersection of Salty Marsh and Kennebec Way yesterday, and the suspect was found hiding at a home in the area. 27 year old Michael Gonzalez is charged in this case. He faces first degree felony murder for allegedly stabbing Malowski. Bear County deputies announced the update online tonight and posted this picture of their suspect. Meanwhile, an in custody death remains under investigation tonight. The man Bear County deputies were after died after turning a gun on himself last night. A Mitsubishi Lancer was stolen and later found in far northeast Bear County. BCSO officials confirmed the original traffic stop was part of an increased patrolling in this part of the county following a recent surge in crime. The driver had pulled over along FM 78 near Walsham Road around 7 o'clock last night before taking off and then shooting himself. Neighbor Jason Dreyer captured video of the large scale response from law enforcement as deputies shut down several blocks. I honestly don't believe he ran through our backyard. Uh, I believe he was on the backside. County officials still have not identified the suspect and say only they have a tentative ID. The medical examiner also working to identify the man who died in fire that ripped through a northeast side home. Firefighters, firefighters responded just after 630 at a home in the 12,000 block of Terrytown Street close to I-35. The man was found dead in one of the bedrooms, the same place firefighters believe the fire started. Investigators say evidence of smoking materials were found nearby. It's unclear why the man was unable to escape as smoke detectors were working. His cause of death is believed to be smoke inhalation. Check out this new video in from the northwest side. Last night's strong winds blowing so hard this roof was torn off. It happened at a home on Gray Fox Terrace. This is near Babcock Road in Loop 1604. With the shingles gone, the wood framing and the rooms left exposed, crews came out to cover that home with large sheets of blue tarp to protect it from the elements. The big story today coming out of the Wild Horse subdivision in the northwestern part of the county. Damage along Palomino Path confirmed to be an EF1 tornado last night. Kenneth Perez said he yelled at his son upstairs about the tornado warning and the family took shelter in a restroom away from windows. Afterwards, they took a look at the damage, realizing everyone inside, including the family dog, had been spared from the worst. 
Yeah, and Tim, we just got confirmation from the National Weather Service earlier today that there was the confirmed EF1 tornado. This is the part of town we're looking at. This is from last night, just south of Helotus, and basically we're looking at 1604 and Braun Road. Circle it again for you, just north of Shanefield, and that's this circle. That's Palomino Pass, and that's the only damage from last, no last night's storms where we have a confirmed tornado. Okay, the only damage caused by a tornado, EF1 with max winds at 100 miles per hour. We have some activity moving through town right now. This is not severe. Okay, this is nothing like last night. A lot of lightning and thunder. This may be scaring the kids and your pets as well. Let them rest assured that it's just noisy out there and some good heavy rainfall, but we're not looking at the same high winds and we're not looking at any large hail at the moment. There is a slight risk this could further develop, but right now I think our primary risk is flash flooding. I'm going to have a comprehensive update coming up in a few minutes. Thank you so much, Adam. And after last night's storms, Bear County's warning homeowners who need that repair work done to be careful who they hire. The county says there are some red flags to look out for, including putting down money up front and pushy sales tactics. There is no deadline to remove things by or anything like that, especially the morning after. We definitely want folks to take their time and be safe. If they ask for a deposit up front and say that they're going to come back later to do the work, that's probably a big red flag. So to make sure you don't fall victim, file a claim with your insurance company, get some estimates, and research businesses before you hire them. Let's take a look at the latest numbers of COVID-19 cases here in Bear County. Tonight, a total of 2,449 confirmed, confirmed cases of COVID-19. That's an increase of seven since yesterday. When breaking those numbers down, almost 1,300 have recovered from the illness. And there are no new cases at the jail. And today there were also no new deaths to report, leaving the total of deaths here at 69. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the cases of COVID-19 in our surrounding counties. Hayes County has 270 cases. Comal County reporting 82 confirmed cases. Bandera sits at six. Medina at 68. Guadalupe County has 114 cases, while Wilson has 38 and Atascosa reporting 36 cases. We're also tracking these numbers on KSAT.com. One more scam alert for you tonight. This one about a spike in COVID-19 related scams. Federal authorities warn businesses and those looking for work that they might be easy targets. The night team's Patty Santos explains what you should look out for. We're going to be looking for you and it's a better choice to uh, discontinue breaking the law. It's not worth it. The San Antonio FBI office and U.S. Secret Service have teamed up with other federal and local investigators to crack down on COVID-19 related schemes nationwide. The current trend that we're seeing is in price gouging with the purchase of protective equipment. Businesses looking to buy personal protection equipment for their staff need to report price inflation to the FBI and use legitimate companies to ensure delivery. I think we're going to see this more in the future now that businesses are starting to open up. She says government agencies and healthcare facilities in our area have already fallen victim. The fraud task force is also looking out for those swindling funds out of the federal small business loan program. These are unscrupulous individuals that are just trying to get their money on these funds. The Secret Service warns that phishing and ransomware thieves are still up to their old games. The types of crimes haven't really changed much. It's just the their, you know, the criminal exploitation of the fear and uncertainty that surrounds the pandemic. Those working from home should stay up to date on their computer upgrades and don't click on just any website or attachment. I think a, an example would be, um, you know, just just people that are starving for information related to the pandemic. Bottom line is be suspicious. Be cautious of fake online job applications that look to steal your personal and bank account information, which in turn could be used to steal things like your stimulus check. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Tomorrow on GMSA, more older people are turning to marijuana than ever before. Experts are revealing why that is in a surprising new study and the risks you should know about. That's tomorrow on GMSA. Still ahead on the night beat, a mobile home park in town took a hit from last night's winds as well. Out of the damage shines the spirit of San Antonio, the tale of two neighbors coming up. And San Antonio's sister city in China now stepping up to help amid the pandemic. The package is delivered to the Alamo City. That's coming up. And were you able to catch today's flyover of San Antonio? If not, we have the highlights next on the night beat. Never miss
miss a story, watch live, or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather, streaming free on KSAT TV. People from across San Antonio stopped by Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery today for Memorial Day. One man even rode his bike from Kelly Field to the cemetery to honor his father and uncle. He spent the day riding through the area to show support for other fallen heroes. Families were seen throughout the cemetery visiting their own loved ones. People we spoke to say that we should always remember the sacrifices that people took for Memorial Day. There was also a special flyover at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. It was one of several locations where four World War II aircrafts soared over San Antonio. We had two photojournalists there to capture the event and how it affected the people watching from the ground. It gives a little bit of meaning more to this day. Our grandfathers both flew, or our, one of our grandfathers flew in World War II, and um, our other one was in World War II. So, I mean, it just, uh, it just, I'm tearing up because it just, it's. Coming up, we speak to one of the pilots inside a B-52. You'll hear from that San Antonio native later in our newscast. New on the night beat, out of the damage and disaster shines the kindness from a community. Neighbors stepping in to help after a tree was tossed onto a man's home over on the far west side. Our photographers caught the damage left behind and the helping hands that were there to pick up the pieces at the Country Oaks Mobile Home Park. It sounded like a train coming or something really nasty. Sergio Quintanilla wasn't expecting any bad weather yesterday and he even got a few invitations to go out. People out at the coast, out at the lake, hey, come on down. Oh, no, the wife says it's going to rain. She's out there trying to get the birds or the cats or the dogs inside. I'm going, baby, get in here. No more than that. I said that. Oh. Things started flying left and right. I mean, just out of nowhere. Sergio's wife got inside, but outside tree limbs were cracked and siding on several of the homes at the Country Oaks Mobile Home Park became twisted. A couple of lots down, Rick Esqueda was filled with worry. I don't think I've ever prayed that fast in my entire life. We made it through. We made it through, thank God. And I called up Sergio this morning and I said, well, I see a branch on the roof. Can you maybe come by and take a look at it? Come out here and he actually has the whole tree on, the, on his roof. Armed with a saw, neighbors gathered to help break the debris down. Rick, who's in a wheelchair, says he was in disbelief. Something huge came and sat on my house. It's a sense of community that holds strong between these neighbors. They've lived in the area for more than 15 years, and it's a bond that not even strong winds can uproot. Rough as it is for some of us, and here with Corona-19, come on. Not if we need any more, but thank the Lord, we're all here helping each other out. Thank God for these amazing neighbors. I just, I can't say enough about them. Can't say enough about them. Neighbors helping neighbors, always a good story. We have more good news coming your way. Tune in tomorrow at 7 p.m. for Something Good. It's a special event that's a collaboration with KSAT's five sister stations. In times of crisis and uncertainty, people continue to come together, lifting up their communities in inspiring ways. So don't miss the special tomorrow, right after the news at 6, right here on KSAT. All right, let's take a live look outside with live cam. We can hear the thunder here in the studio right now as the storms move into downtown San Antonio. Adam, more rain. Yeah, more rain, and mostly this is just more soaking rainfall that the aquifer is going to be drinking up here. See a lot of lightning and thunder out there. It is loud and maybe scary for the kids and the pets, but uh, just let them know that we're not looking at anything severe at the moment. So we don't have those damaging winds like we did last night. We don't have any large hail out there to report at the moment. All right, let's take a look at radar. We do have the batch of scattered activity pushing through a good chunk of Bear County, neighboring Kendall County, moving into Kamal County and even clipping parts of Southern Kamal County at the moment. And now some development in Atascosa County. And we're not forgetting you folks west along Highway 90 where this came from, even in Hondo, some development on the back side of this. So this is the leading edge and I'm going to actually get you a new track here. This one's going to be more updated. Let's get you a new track just so we can really time it out and give you the best information here. But this will be the, well, okay. I guess that new track doesn't want to doesn't want to draw for me. Uh, anyway, this 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 will be pushing eastward at 35 miles per hour, and that means it's going to make it to Converse pretty much momentarily. I mean, it's almost there right now in Converse and even downtown San Antonio. You've got it, of course, moving through. You get to Lavernia and you'd probably be getting getting it in Lavernia uh, by a 
about 1048 p.m. OK, so Lavernia 1048 p.m., New Berlin 1045, China Grove 1025. You get the idea. This is pushing eastward right now. Nothing severe associated with it. Bernie, you have some heavy rainfall as well. Some very heavy rainfall in and around Bernie, Fair Oaks Ranch area. This is coming down at a very, very heavy clip at the moment. I mean, we've been seeing some rainfall rates within this on the order of six to seven inches per hour, especially here on the south side of San Antonio. That's where we have the pockets of heaviest rainfall. OK, I know these are displaying four or five inches per hour, but even embedded within this, I've seen some rainfall rates uh, previously of up to seven inches per hour. And already this has a history of dropping about an inch of rainfall. OK, so this is going to give you most likely a good inch of rain as it moves through, especially on the south side of San Antonio. You get up into Bernie, you've got the heaviest of the rain, a lot of lightning and thunder, but nothing severe. Same story, Fair Oaks Ranch. Then you get off to the west of town, and that's where we have more development just west of Uvalde. Now, there is the threat and the chance of severe weather all the way through about the 4 a.m. hour, but that's generally along and west of 281 and particularly southwest of San Antonio. Then you get just west of New Braunfels and east of Canyon Lake, and it's starting to flare up out ahead of it. So we're not looking at anything severe, just a lot of lightning and thunder, but not the wind that we had last night. And hail within this, maybe pea size to penny size. Right now, that, that would be it, so non-damaging hail size too. But we'll keep an eye on this batch uh, behind it. This yellow box, that's a severe thunderstorm watch box that's in effect until 4 a.m., Again, there is that off chance of a rogue severe gust or a severe sized hail, but we really think the primary threat is flash flooding here. After all the rainfall we had yesterday on the order of three to four inches in parts of Bear County, I think flash flooding is our primary threat. So it's best just to not venture out if you don't have to tonight. All right, here's a look at our future cast, and this one handles it okay. I think it shows a little too much of a line forming. Not, nonetheless, I like the timing of it that by 1, 2 a.m. it's east of San Antonio and by sunrise tomorrow, just a few straggler showers and storms possible will give it a 30 percent chance in the morning. So through the rest of the evening here, 11 p.m., 1 a.m., those scattered showers and thunderstorms, flash flooding possible, outside chance of a severe storm too. We'll be here tracking it. We'll let you know if uh, if you need to take any take shelter or anything. But right now that is definitely not the case. The clouds today, they're our saving grace. Those clouds kept our atmosphere from becoming too unstable and basically is keeping this from getting even stronger that we have out there. Tomorrow we'll have some sunshine by the afternoon, 82 degrees, uh, fairly quiet this week, right near 90 mixture of sun and clouds Wednesday and Thursday, a little enhanced chance of some scattered activity as we get into Friday. But we'll have another update coming up uh, in about 15, 20 minutes. Well, that storm is loud over us right now, but obviously it can sound scarier than it actually is. Yeah, it's good. Little boomers out there. <laughs> All right, I know everybody wants to see the NBA come back. Sure. But Spurs fans might be rooting against that because their playoff streak could be at risk. The format they're discussing now would limit the amount of teams that actually play in a so-called playoff picture in one location in Disney World. When we come back, why the Spurs may be left out and the Astros are open for business, sort of. Coming up. The Memorial Day miracle occurred almost 21 years ago to the day the legendary three-pointer delivered by Sean Elliott to help propel the Spurs past the Portland Trail Blazers in game two of the Western Conference Finals in the Alamo Dome in 1999 on to the NBA Finals of the New York Knicks where they won their first ever NBA championship. It never gets old. When the NBA resumes its 2019-2020 season in late July, it may be with the playoffs only and seeding teams regardless of their conference from 1 to 16. That's according to ESPN. If that format is approved by the NBA Board of Governors, then the Spurs season is over, meaning they miss the playoffs for the first time in 23 seasons. Right now, the Spurs stand four games back in the Memphis Grizzlies, who own the eighth and final playoff spot in the Western Conference. And if the season resumes with only the postseason, the Lakers, Clippers, the Nuggets, Utah, OKC, Houston, Dallas, and Memphis would be in everyone else 
in the West would be out. The obvious advantage to this plan is that the NBA would only have to worry about 16 teams reporting to the wide world of sports complex in Disney. The proposed site for the league's return with three arenas and plenty of hotel space for players and staff. On this Memorial Day, David Robinson, who attended the Naval Academy and served the Navy before joining the Spurs in 1989, was a guest on NBA Together live stream where host Ernie Johnson brought up the fact the Admiral missed the NBA draft when he selected number one in 1987. I remember I had military commitments that day because, you know, I look back at it now and my sons are asking me, Dad, why didn't you go to the NBA draft? That's, a, that's an amazing yeah. thing. Well, why wouldn't you do that? And I said, I, I had something in the military to do. I, I didn't remember that was meeting with the vice <laughs> president. But I said, I, you know, when you're in the military, you don't have you don't make those choices. That's right. The Houston Astros have opened Minute Maid Park and their spring training facility in West Palm Beach, Florida for workouts beginning today. New general manager James Click announcing the facilities will be open for individual workouts and no more than six players at a time at each facility in staggered sessions that includes treatment sessions with staff. The Astros are able to open only after getting approval from Major League Baseball, the two state and local governmental agencies and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. The workouts will take place with strict guidelines and protocols and include temperature screenings before anyone enters either facility. No group workouts, and each player will be assigned his own set of baseballs. This opening is the first step in baseball getting back to business after it was shut down in March during spring training. I want Tom Brady. I ain't going to lie. Hey, Tom, how many shots you want? This Chuck. Chuck. C come on, man. I'm going to give you some shots, man. I want All some right. of you. Gotta get going. Chuck, I've been focusing on football, bro. <laughs> <laughs> trying to win a Super Bowl. Man. Charles Barkley had been giving now Bucks quarterback Tom Brady a lot of grief during the Champions for Charity Made for TV golf event featuring his partner Phil Mickelson going up against Tiger Woods and Peyton Manning. In fact, Mickelson and Brady were down three strokes and Brady delivered his best shot of the tournament on seven, landing his approach shot on the ring with a backspin that finds a hole. Barkley had already promised an extra $50,000 donation if the six-time Super Bowl champ could just find a green in a par three and Brooks Kepka chimed in with an additional $100,000 that Brady would just par a hole. He shut everyone up but split his pants in the process and broke his microphone. It was all for charity. In the end, Tiger Woods only needed a two-putt to win the tournament, but they gave him the gimme at the end for the one-stroke victory. I was a little nervous, a little tight, the front nine, and my man kept us in there, and the back nine, he really shined and hit some great shots, and we made a run and um, came really close. Knowing that 20 million dollars was raised and helping people that are really going through tough times. Uh, it was an honor for Tom and I both to be yeah, invited absolutely. by Phil and Tiger to play in this match and uh, really something I'll always remember and yeah. cherish. And through all that rain so far NASCAR's comeback is gold next. Roger Penske would have to settle for a NASCAR victory this weekend rather than staging his first race as the new owner of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway after the Indy 500 was postponed to August due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The race got off on time, but before the green flag would drop, trouble for Denny Hamlin. He lost a tungsten balance at the pace lap and had to return to the pit to get it replaced. That's an automatic four-game suspension for his crew chief for race, that is. The race had to be stopped on lap 51 of stage one, and there was over an hour rain delay, setting up for an interesting finish with two laps to go. Brad Keselowski had made him so all the way to the front after starting at the rear of the field. But when a caution came out with two laps to go, Chase Elliott, who had been in the lead, decided to pit. Keselowski did not. The decision proved to be costly. Keselowski would then hold off Jimmy Johnson for the checkered flag and his first ever win in the Coca-Cola 600. And get this, even if Johnson had won, he would not have. That's because his car was disqualified in a post-race inspection. They don't know why that happened. There was about the suspension. They're going to investigate that. But how about that? Even if he'd won... Even out. Wouldn't yeah, matter. that other car, things falling off, that's never a good sign. <laughs> never a good sign, though. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Thank you. All right, still ahead on the night beat, San Antonio's sister city, hoping to help out like local students helped them at the start of the coronavirus. What some in Wu Chi, China, are sending to the Alamo City. And a formation of four WW11 aircrafts fly over Military City, USA. Tonight, we catch up with one of the pilots who was born and raised right here in San Antonio. And here's a live look at our storm chaser out and about tonight. The rain coming down. We'll check in with meteorologist Adam Kasky coming up as the night beat continues. These brave souls gave of themselves, some paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we could be standing here talking with you about what they did to preserve this nation. 
It is a solemn and important day to remember and honor those who gave their lives while fighting for our country. While the pandemic limited the ceremonies that usually occur at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery, there were still flags laid out at the grave sites. Others gave salute to pay their respects and families showed up to pass on stories to the next generation. There was also a flyover featuring several World War II aircraft, the pilots flying over Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. People on the ground took a moment to capture the site on their phones. We'll be hearing from one of the pilots just ahead in this newscast. But first, an unprecedented Memorial Day as Americans emerge from quarantine, worrying scenes as many openly defy social distancing guidelines. The nation clearly struggling to balance reopening the country without putting even more lives at risk. ABC's Romina Puga reports this comes as the U.S. death toll nears 100,000. Crowds descending on scenic Lake Havasu, packed pools at Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks. If you're worried about it, stay home. If you don't want to catch it, then stay home. <laughs> and rivers in Texas overflowing with tubers this Memorial Day weekend. If I get it, everybody else getting it, hey, it's life. This club in Houston receiving about 300 complaints after being crammed with partiers defying social distancing guidelines. All the while, new cases of COVID-19 surging in several states. At least 11 still reporting increasing cases, including Arkansas, which is going through a second peak. And no end in sight for COVID cases in the food industry. Officials revealing ongoing outbreaks at nine facilities in Los Angeles County. Just last week, Tyson Foods announcing more than a quarter of its total workforce at a poultry facility in North Carolina tested positive for the virus. These facilities are not equipped to really honor the safety protocol, which is social distancing and other methods that we are recommending in partially opening up the economy. That economic reality is harsh. A recent survey finding half of small business owners say they will be out of cash within a month. It's going to be very, very hard. Um, there's no outdoor dining. There's no indoor dining. We can't survive off of to-go and to-go cocktails. And President Trump joining the nation in grief over the almost 100,000 lives lost. As one nation, we mourn alongside every single family that has lost loved ones. While indoor venues remain closed, the president now threatening to move the Republican National Convention from Charlotte if North Carolina's governor can't guarantee full attendance in the arena by August. In Colorado, Romina Puga, ABC News. And take a look at this. According to the San Francisco Chronicle, there has been an increase in coyote sightings in the city now that many human residents have been ordered to stay home during the coronavirus pandemic for several weeks. And a couple of those coyotes decided to serenade their human neighbors by howling from a hilltop that overlooks the city. And closer to home, we saw crowds head to the Comal River to float with friends. Many people are wondering, can he catch COVID-19 from water? Previous research from the University of Arizona shows that coronavirus can survive for a period of time in tap water. CDC experts, however, say there's no evidence that the virus can spread to people through treated water in pools, hot tubs, spas, or water play areas. Proper maintenance with chlorine and bromine will kill it. And if you're at the beach or the lake, it may be in the water, but it will likely be too diluted to pass on to you. So what do you need to worry about? Experts say the danger of beaches, pools and lakes is not in the water, but the people who will be around you not practicing social distancing. Right now on KSAT.com, another update from HEB. The grocery store chain has changed its limits on meat amid the pandemic to protect the supply chain. San Antonio is just one of the many regions now limiting customers to one brisket per purchase. Stores in the Houston area are seeing further limits to other meat and sanitary supplies. Meanwhile, HEB has extended its $2 pay increase for hourly employees through June 21st. When the coronavirus crisis began, several San Antonio area students stepped up to help people living in sister city Wu Chi by writing letters of encouragement. Now students in China are responding back with a message and thousands of masks. Tiffany Huertas has a look at what students want San Antonians to know. We were told that uh, you have a serious epidemic and we really care about you. After hearing the U.S. was greatly impacted by the pandemic, students from Wuxi, China, wanted to help. When we heard that you were running out of uh, medical masks, we decided to 
raise money. The students in China raised enough money to send 4,000 masks for schools in San Antonio that are involved with the nonprofit Summer of Service. The nonprofit works to educate kids through community service learning and travel abroad. Local families also host students from other countries. Due to COVID-19, San Antonio families couldn't host students from Wuxi this year. 15-year-old Han Fang Gu stayed with a local family in 2018. We really appreciate them for their kindness. They treat it as just like if we're families. Han Feng was involved in sending masks to San Antonio. He understands the severity of the situation. Han Feng says back home in Wuxi, China, life was very different a few months ago. It was really serious. We had to stay at home and the government told us not to go anywhere because it would be quite dangerous to do so. Han Fang says things are getting better and slowly back to normal. According to Johns Hopkins University in Medicine, there are more than 84,000 coronavirus cases in China. Han Fang hopes people can come together during these difficult times. While mountains and rivers separate us, we enjoy the moonlight under the same sky. So let's unite and accept, expect happiness to come. We really hope that you, you will get better soon. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Another push to pick up the short supply of blood donations. Tomorrow, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is hoping to get that supply up with your help. It'll be at the San Antonio Shrine Auditorium from 9 a.m. until 2 in the afternoon. If you want to give, you are required to make an appointment ahead of time, and you are urged to keep that appointment once you make it. To make an appointment, all you have to do is go to the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center's website. To make it easy for you, we've got a link posted on our website at ksat.com. All right, let's head back out live with Storm Chaser tonight. This is on the east side by I-35 and Walters. Meteorologist Adam Kasky tracking that rain tonight, and you can still see that lightning, Adam, in the background. Yeah, and I'm happy to report that this is nothing damaging. This is nothing like what we had last night. We're just looking at some loud thunder a lot of flashes of lightning and heavy rainfall. This has a lot more bark than it does bite moving through town, and I'm happy to report that. There still is the lingering threat of a rogue severe storm popping up. But right now you see a lot of activity, Canyon Lake all the way down to Bulverde area. This is all pushing eastward into the I-35 corridor, moving into Green and New Braunfels. And of course, on the east side of town, here it is, I-10. In 1604, back to I-10 and 410, you get to 87 as well into Lavernia. This is moving into Lavernia as we speak, and that's just the leading edge of it. Getting to Floresville by about 10:51 p.m. Nixon further down the line at 11:23 p.m. and then Gonzalez at about 11:45. That's with the current timing and track of this. Taking the lightning off, you see the heaviest of the rainfall indicated in red. That's on the east side of town, and that's between 4:10 and 16:04, and on the south side. We'll talk more about rainfall accumulations and totals and uh, much more coming right up, Tim. Thank you, Adam. Another potential COVID-19 vaccine is entering human trials. The first volunteer was expected to be given that vaccine today in Australia. The vaccine's maker, Novavax, wants to test about 130 people during this trial. According to the Maryland-based biotechnology company, the vaccine works by producing high levels of neutralizing antibodies. Although those findings were announced in a press release and not reviewed by peers or published in a medical journal, Novavax says preliminary safety and effectiveness of the vaccine should be ready as early as July. If those results are promising, phase two of the trial will begin with more participants in other countries. Latin America now the hotspot of the pandemic. Brazil in particular, a major concern. There are also concerns in Mexico, right on America's southern border, which is now at its peak. Many worried they could catch the virus from those in the United States. That land border is technically closed, but in practice, people are still able to cross over if they have the right permission. Trucks and cargo are able to go in both directions, and we're seeing sparks of cases along the border. Coming up, the sharing of your information is happening, but there is a way to manage your privacy. We're tapping into a feature you may not have seen on Facebook. Coming up. And up next, we catch up with one of the pilots who made today's Memorial Day flyover possible in Military City, USA. What the San Antonio native is sharing with us after the break. You may have taken some time to look towards the sky today. A formation of four World War II era planes making their way over San Antonio to help remember those who lost their lives fighting for our country. 
Some of you may have wondered who were the pilots inside those planes. Well, one of them is a man born and raised right here in San Antonio. Vincent Sosa was the man at the controls of the B-25 today during that 30-minute flyover. Max Massey spoke with Sosa before takeoff and gives us an inside look into what goes into flights like this. This B-25 is one of four World War II era aircrafts cruising over San Antonio. And one of the pilots flying right now, he's been working decades to get to today. I went to an air show when I was young and saw the Blue Angels and it just stuck ever since then. Vincent Sosa was born and raised in San Antonio. As it's a special day for our city, it's also a special day for him. When I was in fourth grade, I did a, a report on the Doolittle Raiders and the B-25, you know, Ben, I was building models of them. Now I get to fly it. It's, it's, it's a dream come true. This is the second flyover this month, but it's going to be much different than the Thunderbirds. They were going around 500 knots and we're going to do about 200 miles per hour. So that's really, that's why our route's much shorter. For the most part, the pilots like Vincent will be in the cockpit, but there's a much better vantage point on the plane. Really in the B-25, the best seat is in the nose. Uh, the glass nose, so you have to get out of your the cockpit if you're going to go there or whatever seat you're in. And there's a little tunnel you crawl through, and there's still a working bomb site. So it's pretty cool to be able to get up there. As for the reason for the flyover, it is all about honor and making today Memorial Day special. It's a great honor to, to participate in this event that honors the people that gave the ultimate sacrifice for Memorial Day and the people that flew these airplanes. They were very young, 18, 19, 20 years old that went into combat to give us freedoms we have today. Rod Lewis, founder of Lewis Air Legend, says freedom is more important now than ever, and today we honor those heroes who helped protect it. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. I had an opportunity a few years ago to fly in a different one called the Yellow Rose, and honestly, it was like flying in a VW micro bus <laughs> with wings. And those oh, things wow. are loud and rough. And those pilots are talented yes, to be able to fly are. those. All right, live look outside here with our storm chaser, lots of Drops on the camera there and some lightning Ooh. lighting up the sky. Yeah, a lot of bark, not a whole lot of bite with this. Luckily, it's loud. Just let your kids know if they're waking up and they're scared. Uh, th it's, it's okay. This is not severe. We're not looking at anything that's damaging out there. So that's the good news with this. All right, let's take a look at the uh, drought monitor along with the... Rainfall, so the radar, this is from last night. Boom, big swath, unfortunately that came at a cost. But then you get into today, and here we go. Another round of rain in parts of South Texas that I really needed. Play this for you one more time before we jump into rainfall accumulations. But it's nice to see this. We are continuing to chip away at the drought here in South Texas. The aquifer already up a foot and a half since yesterday's rainfall, and it's going to continue to respond to this. You look at the 48 hour estimates. These reds indicate about five inches estimated by the Doppler radar, and a lot of this is right in the aquifer recharge and drainage zone, right where we want to get it in order to boost the aquifer. So this is good. This is going to keep us out of stage one for quite some time here. And there's more rain on the back side of this, but I want to show you the front edge of the line here. Canyon Lake down to New Braunfels, push it into the I-35 corridor. Uh, this there's a line that's just lit up basically from Bracken northward through Canyon Lake. And then you have this other batch that's in the eastern part of Bear County at moving right now into the Lavernia area about to get to Seguin. A few lightning bolts jumping out ahead of it. This is very electrified. It's allowed and you're going to notice it when it hits. Here's the latest timeline. Poth 1104, Stockdale 1109. Then we get to Smiley at about 1138 and Gonzales at 1145. Taking off the lightning, you can see the heavy rain, the heaviest rain right there on the Barron Wilson County line. And you want to talk about some significant rainfall rates. I mean, these are on the order of five to seven inches per hour. Now it's not going to rain for a whole hour, so you're not going to get five, six, seven inches, but a quick one to two inches is possible within that. We also have more development off to the west, and that's something I'm going to watch very closely for the rest of the night, especially for the flash flood potential. There's a boundary here, and we continue to get more development, and then that gets blown over San Antonio. We had a lot of rain yesterday. We're saturated. There's a slight chance of severe weather, so a strong gust or some hail here and there, but the primary threat, I think, is flash flooding but we'll be here to monitor that severe threat and let you know if uh, if there's anything 
imminent that that's out there that'll be affecting you. But otherwise, it's just a lot of lightning and thunder and that's it. We're not looking at anything like last night. So though there are those scattered rain chances pretty high with the thunderstorms through about 2 a.m. And then we see those storm chances drop off and by sunrise tomorrow, basically a few stray showers left over and low clouds. 30% chance in the morning, then some sunshine by the afternoon, 82 degrees, your high temperature tomorrow, 60s in the morning, low 80s in the afternoon, then near 90 by Wednesday and Thursday, pretty quiet for the middle part of the week. We get into Friday, there's a chance of some widely separated pop up showers and thunderstorms, but right now we're not really anticipating anything like what we've had lately in terms of the intensity, the coverage, and even the severity of it. Nonetheless, I'm going to be here and I'll probably be doing another live uh, update on our KSAT Weather Authority app shortly after the night beat to keep people updated. All right, thank you so much, Adam. He is a world renowned harmonica player, and during the pandemic, Fred Yonit was just looking for a place to practice with his band. And what was started as a plan to get the band together safely has now blossomed into a weekly event in Washington, D.C. When COVID hit Washington, D.C., I was driving my wife nuts. She was going crazy. I wanted to play. It started very, very basic. It was just a need of performing and playing. My name is Frederick Yonne, and I'm a harmonica player. Stapling some big sheets of uh, plastic on the ceiling to separate each one of the band members from each other, create this virtual giant face masks so we could still be creative in a safe environment. We knew that it was going to be loud, so we decided to let the neighbors know. His wife sent out an email to the neighborhood telling everybody they were going to have a jam session. Their reaction was absolutely phenomenal. Once the neighbors showed us some appreciation, it was a natural extension to think about my friends on social media. Dave Chappelle, Michelle Wolf, the comedian as well. Actually, we had the honor of touring with Prince and Stevie Wonder. I have people from literally all over the world right now watching this. From Toulouse, France, from Normandy, my family gets to watch. Let's go! Something pretty interesting happened. We started meeting neighbors. We had never idea lived in the neighborhood for 20, 30, 40 years. This is a perfect outing, a perfect way to meet, a perfect way to enhance friendships, a perfect way to see each other. Now we know each other, we wave at one another. We have had people who now come every Sunday and they know us and they take the same seats on the wall and it's great. We didn't know these people before and now we do. The reason I come outside at the end of the performances is to uh, to get reconnected with a, with a real live audience. It's fulfilling. We are connecting through the darkness of COVID, but also through the positive energy of live music. Thank you everyone, stay safe. See you again, maybe next Sunday. Now that is a neighborhood that you want to live in. Absolutely. Still ahead on the Nightbeat, Facebook introduced a new feature you may not be aware of, and it has to do with your privacy, how you can tap into the new tool coming up. And gas prices are slowly rising, but where does San Antonio stand compared to the national average? And what are experts predicting for the future? We've got all of that coming up. Well, gas prices are ticking up, but you may not even notice. AAA says the national average for one gallon of regular is $1.96. That's about nine cents more than a week ago, but the association says gas has not been this cheap on Memorial Day weekend in almost 20 years. While the national average sits at 196, the average price in Texas is much lower at 161. And when looking at gas prices here at home, San Antonio's average is even lower at 158 per gallon. AAA expects the uptick to continue since demand is likely to grow as the economy reopens. Here's some news you can use, Facebook and your privacy. The social media site tracks this even when we're not on the site. Through its relationships with hundreds of thousands of apps and websites, Facebook gets a constant stream of information about what users do online. If that sounds like oversharing, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains what you can do to manage your privacy. 
It may seem creepy, but Facebook knows a lot about us. It gets that info from apps and websites you use. OkCupid, okay, some details about my dating life. There's Uber, AT&T, Lifehacker.com, ZocDoc. There's all kinds of personal information here that you might not realize is being sent to the company. Not surprisingly, people are concerned about where that data goes. So Facebook introduced a feature earlier this year called Off Facebook Activity Settings. What Facebook ultimately decided to do was give you a menu where you could see the last six months of updates that the company has received from third parties. And you can also go in and use a tool called Clear History. That doesn't actually delete your information, but it disconnects it from your account. You can also limit what they do with new data going forward with a setting called Manage Future Activity. It essentially keeps your history cleared by default. Other companies will keep sending Facebook information, but they won't be able to use it for targeted advertising and they won't keep it tied to your account. You may be surprised just how much sharing goes on. I found 413 apps and websites sharing my activity with Facebook. If you need help finding these settings, we have instructions on KSAT.com. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, here's a look at radar. The heaviest of the activity now moving through basically into Seguin through Lavernia down into Floresville. A lot of lightning and thunder with this, and I have to admit this has a lot more bark than bite, so it's loud and noticeable. Thunder and lightning galore with this, heavy rainfall, but nothing severe. We're not looking at any damaging winds like we did last night. Maybe some pea-sized hail and that's it. Still more development off to the west that's likely to move through San Antonio with the slightest chance that could become severe, but for the most part, just some more beneficial rain. Thanks, Adam. That does it for the night. Good morning, San Antonio starts at 4.30. Have a good night.